Have you ever wondered who ruled the Frankish kingdom after the fall of the Roman Empire? Let's step back in time to the 5th century, a pivotal era in European history. The Western Roman Empire has just crumbled, leaving a power vacuum in its wake. From this chaos, a towering figure emerges, Merovec, the progenitor of the Merovingian dynasty. His lineage would go on to shape the early history of what would eventually become France and Germany. Under the rule of his descendant, Clovis I, the Merovingian dynasty expanded, absorbing other Germanic tribes and even Roman territories. Clovis I's reign marked a defining moment in the dynasty's story, transforming the Frankish kingdom into a power to be reckoned with. So picture this, in a world where the once mighty Roman Empire has fallen, a new dynasty rises from its ashes. The Merovingian reign begins, laying the groundwork for nations yet unborn. Imagine that. But who really held the power during the Merovingian reign, you might ask? Well, the answer is as complex as the dynasty itself. The Merovingian kings, in their wisdom or folly, opted to divide their kingdom amongst their sons. This, in essence, was a double-edged sword. It ensured that each son had a stake in the kingdom, but it also sowed the seeds of internal conflict, as each son sought to expand their territory at the expense of their brothers. Over time, these internal power struggles weakened the Merovingian dynasty, creating a power vacuum that was filled by the mayors of the palace. These mayors, initially appointed by the kings to manage their estates, cunningly maneuvered themselves into positions of real authority. They effectively reduced the Merovingian kings to mere figureheads, ruling in their name but wielding the power themselves. A kingdom divided is a kingdom conquered, not by external forces but from within. So how did this dynasty that started so powerfully come to an end? Well, as with many great empires, the Merovingian dynasty fell victim to its own success. Over time, the Merovingians became more figureheads than rulers, their authority waning as the power of the mayors of the palace grew. These mayors, originally administrative assistants to the king, slowly began to assume real political power. This shift reached its pinnacle with Pepin the Short. Pepin was not just a mayor in name, he was a ruler in action. With the Pope's blessing, he took the throne, effectively ending the Merovingian rule. But as one dynasty faded, another rose. Pepin's ascension marked the beginning of the Carolingian dynasty. The Carolingians, with their fresh energy and ambition, would go on to shape a significant part of European history. And so, the sun set on the Merovingian dynasty, only to rise again on a new era under the Carolingians.